Welcome back. Governor Bajere Samuel Lewis said Lagos State government is considering full reopening of its economy and worship centers, a move he said would not be pushed in a hurry. While we await the guidelines for possible reopening of the economy and religious centers, a statement from the government states that the government officials will visit restaurants, companies, religious houses to assess their level of readiness and compliance. The governor said Lagos cannot afford to keep people and businesses on lockdown permanently. And joining us to have a conversation around this is political analyst Mukhtar Mohammed via Skype and also I've been joined by Pastor Wale Ade Farasin, the General Overseer of Guiding Light Assembly via phone. Thank you, Pastor Wale, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Mukhtar, thank you also for joining us via Skype, Mukhtar. Thank you so much. And still with me in the studio live is Osaje with me, Dixon. Thank you, Osaje, for staying still with us on the show. Nice to be here. Now, Governor Bajere Saolu has said Lagos State Government is considering full reopening of its economy and worship centers. Um, I'm going to start with you, Pastor Wale. What is your opinion about this? Do you think it's a good idea, sir? Well, the governor is in a very difficult position. He has, on the one hand, getting the economy started again. Uh, and you know, in Lagos, most people live by what they earn each day. So if they're not earning, they can't feed their families. And then on the other side, he's got to stop this pande pandemic from, from killing more people. So it's a very tough decision for him. Now, what do I think? I, I don't have to make his choice. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if churches are allowed to open, I still won't open unless I believe it is safe for the, for the congregants for me to do so. All right, Mukhtar, you could react to, to the statement um, credited to Lagos State Government about the possible reopening of some the economy and companies and restaurants and places of religious worship. For me, um, it's a good idea. Um, we can continue to shut down every place because of... Um, um, the pandemic um, is something that have to, we, we may have to live with for a while. So what the government should be doing is how we can manage ourselves through the pan pandemic. And that is what they come with the social distancing and um, other things they are trying to bring into play. So I think um, just like Pastor Wally said sometime again, you need to look at the safety of the people. You need to look at um, how well, because if you open an economy and people are not safe, people are not ready to go to work, that's a different thing. But again, we are, we are largely driven by, our economy is largely driven in, by the informal sector, those people that have to go out daily to make a living. So you can't continue to shut down the economy and you expect that um, there will not be a repercussion to it. Number one, we're already in a dear situation, then shutting down is not going to help the average citizen. Like I said, they are mostly people that go out every day to any living. So for me, I think it's high time they open the economy, even if they are going to open it gradually. For places of worship, I don't think it will be a problem if it is open because um, they, they, they will be able to organize their people on doing social distancing. Uh, like one of the man of God said, is it easy to open a place of worship, which is more easier to open a place of worship or to open the market? If you agree with me that the place of worship is more easier to manage than the market. All right, Pastor Wale, you rightly said while you were speaking earlier that even if they were to open places of worship, that you will not open until you're sure it is safe to do so. Prior to this time, we had many clamors from many clergymen who felt, you know, that, that there was some sinister move against the church. And that was why they had to close down many places of worship. And given the measures put in place by the Lagos State government and social distancing, wearing of face mask, how do you see this panning out for many churches that might decide to reopen for, for, their, for their worships and services? Well, first of all, let, let me say that um, it's not going to be that easy to do social distancing um, as people arrive at church and as people leave church. Uh, so it, it's, it's while they're in church that we can separate them. Um, but, you, you know, Right now, the figures, the, the figures of new infections are quite high. They haven't dropped. We haven't reached the peak. So I, I'm not sure that this is the best time 
to totally open the economy, you know. Um, and, 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 you know, we, we, will, we will watch, we will monitor, uh, we'll listen to the information that is coming out, we'll look at the science, and, and we'll take our decision based on that. But we don't have the same pressure that the governor has in determining when people go back to work. All right, Pasuali. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Asadi, you just said, Pasuali, what he said. Um, yeah. that the numbers are increasing, and he feels it is not right to open up the economy at this point with the, with the rising numbers of COVID-19 infection in, in the state. Lagos being the epicenter of it. Why, why do you think, do you feel that the, gov the governor is under any kind of pressure? I mean, what could be informing the decision now with the rising cases and Lagos being the epicenter of, of the COVID-19? Yeah, we are, we are taking the lead, and uh, frankly speaking, uh, Babajide is doing a very good job. Uh, he's been really proactive. Uh, preactive and uh, is predicting the future as well, you know. You know, sometimes when we talk about emergency uh, uh, management or emergency situation or state of emergency is the suspension of human rights, you know. I think you and I, we've been uh, experiencing some suspension of our rights, you know, rights to uh, uh, socialize, yes. rights to move around freely, you understand. But for me, I think what the church should do, uh, opening the church would be a good one, you know, because if we still believe in uh, divine uh, uh, powers, uh, those powers should be called to come and take away this COVID-19. Uh, because uh, I was interacted with my friends some few days back, and uh, the widely accepted notion is that uh, China product don't last. Why is COVID-19 uh, taking so long? You know, it's just like a joke, you know. Uh, but for me, what I expect the church to do, uh, the government should open the church and uh, the places of worship, and uh, we should also carry out a risk analysis of the house of worship, you know, you know, uh, because protecting house of worship is very essential. You know, you have to put in a, a risk implications and applications in place. You know, uh, social distances should be practiced in the church uh, because uh, in the market area, is more, uh, uh, you know, uh, ter terrible uh, yeah. compared to the church. Uh, for me, if the church is uh, allowed to come into activities, uh, mitigation factors should be put in place, and I think there'll be no problem. All right, Mukhtar, let me come to you. Um, based on what you said earlier, your first submission. Now, I I'm concerned because at the first easing of the lockdown, which took effect May 4th, we saw the pandemonium that Lagos turned into May 4th. Now, you have the opinion that the economy should be opened up. Companies, restaurants, religious houses should, should also open up. Now, the Lagos State Governor said officials from the state government would visit restaurants, companies, religious houses to assess their level of readiness. Now, how do you think this level of preparedness will look, especially for worship centers, where you know hundreds, people in their hundreds and thousands thronging to, to worship their God? Like I said, I still believe that the worship center can easily be managed than other centers. Um, is it social distancing? You, you need to look at the, the, the type. It depends how? on the church. Is, also is it to meet the numbers of people have. that come into the also, service? How, uh, do you, how, do you, how, how, will, how will it be managed? Is it by limiting look, the numbers the church, of people to come the, into the a worship center at a given time? Have what they have their security apparatus that they have. They have their ushers inside the church also that have to manage. And people where they sit. Remember, even in the initial case, the Lagos State government started with churches being uh, having only 20 people. I mean, it was supposed to be 50. Later, it was moved to 20. And most churches in Lagos actually comply to that. So, for me, the churches can 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 be able to manage um, those um, social distancing thing, uh, depending, like I said, depending on the building and depending on the number. I don't expect Lagos State to open up the churches and said um, churches should reopen that every member with the normal, if you are 2,000 capacity, 3,000 capacity. No, I don't think so. I think they will start gradually and then begin to, to see how they can tackle this pan pandemonia, uh, this pandemic. And then look, 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 look let's, let's, let's look at the, 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 the place of um, restaurants or eatery that have been opened. If you go through them, you realize that they are managing it also because you can see the eateries, you are not allowed to eat there. You, you are not allowed to come in if you don't have a face mask. So all these things are being, are being de dealt with very well by, by most of these organizations. So I don't think it will be a rocket science for any organization to say, for the bank, why we had those rush? Remember that we've been away, that time was almost like over a month, about five weeks. Some people, their ATM card at that time got, um, got I mean, what, 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 what has expired. Some people also had to do banking transaction. Some people also had, had one issue or the other with the bank. And this, if you look at it, that's why I say it was really, really the informal people that were right there in the church that, I mean, in, in the bank that day. So it, it's something that could be managed. And if you realize again, why you had that crowd is also that they, 
The banks also were trying to manage. Okay. They were trying. They were not opening up all their branches. Oh, they were trying to open now, this please. branch, then yeah. this inside the branch before the next branch. Okay, Pastor Wally, let me come to you. Finally, I think this will be my last question for you, sir. Now, I believe you're aware. You're aware of the um, the the bill that has passed the second reading on the floor of the Senate about the um, infectious disease control bill before the House of Rep currently. Now, the founder of Living Faith Church, as Bishop David Oyedipo, stated last week and said that those behind the bill, the infectious control disease bill that's on COVID-19 at the House of Representatives were on an evil mission. I need your take on the infectious disease bill, sir. Well, let me, let me come back to the question of the bill. Okay. I, I just want to take up um, something that was mentioned by, by, by your other guests. Mokhtar. Now, the church is not the building. So the church has continued to be active in spite of the fact that the building has been closed. I would like to see the building open, uh, but it will, we, we will wait until we, have su we reach such a time as we can confidently do so without any fear of people getting infected. Okay. Now, now on the bill, um, I'm following the bill. I've listened to what the Speaker of the House said about the bill. Um, and, and I think what, what is happening is as long as there's a public hearing and the members of the public have an opportunity to air their views, um, that, that's fine. Uh, anybody who wants to, to air his views should take advantage of the public hearing. Um, I, and I tend to, to believe what the uh, Director General of the NDDCC said when, when he said that this isn't the best time to be introducing a bill. Uh, 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 it's better to do it with hindsight after the pandemic is over. General Overseer, Pastor Wale Adefas in Guardian Land Assembly, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Now, Mokhtar, to you finally, um, looking at the state of things in the country and in Lagos especially, do, do you believe this should even be considered as it has even been reported that many have not been complying to the already issued NCDC rules and regulations and measures that were even put in place by the Lagos State Government started, which started May 4th? Um, <laughs> it depends. I, I, I think um, some people are looking at their survivor and also, I think what Lagos State should actually do is to begin to sanction and which I think they are doing, especially if you break the lockdown rule. And I think that is one thing they should be um, hard on, sanctioning people and sanctioning organizations that uh, refuse to follow whatever condition they have set up for them. I think that's the only way. But to say we we'll just shut down Lagos, shut down everywhere and not be able to do anything, again, because we are trying to manage um, the, the spread of COVID-19. The thing of the is even in the developed nations, even we would have very good health care like the United States. They, I mean, they are trying to open up their economy, even despite that they are even a formal economy. So there's, there's even India with the population with the ri ri rising rate of the COVID-19 are opening up their economy also. South Korea is doing the same thing. So you cannot shut an economy, especially an informal economy like what we, we, we do here. Uh, you can't shut it for too long. And also, you shouldn't forget that also this also is affecting the importation of goods. And we are a nation that depends almost 80 to 90 percent on imported goods because the, 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 the seaports also are, are, are closed. And also, revenue also is not coming to government. Oil price is down. Be, there's no movement of goods and services. It, 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 has not been, it, it has not been good. So for me, I think what we need to do is to find out made like other developed countries to manage this pandemic. It will go. It, it will go. The economy will come back. Life will come back to normal. But what we do now will determine um, how well it will live us because we must create the fundamentals to grow our economy. We must create the, the, the enabling law to run our, our 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 country especially when you look at um, things that happen like like you said if you look at the bill that is in the national assembly i think it's a bill that was rushed into just uh, to make sure that we stop the spray of um, covid i think if they need to look at that bill again it's becoming too draconian if it be more or less like a military bill so i think they should look into that you cannot because of that take the freedom 
from a lot of citizens. It's more or less forcing citizens to go and do this and that. And you must know that when it comes to health, health itself is a private matter. It doesn't oh, have... Uh, I, it's a private okay. matter between we, we the individual and the have to let you go now, Mohammed. And not by force. All right. Mukhtar Mohammed, political analyst, thank you for your time and for joining us on Plus Politics. Thank you very much. Do have a pleasant day. Finally, Dixon, I mean, let's wrap up with this. Uh, in, in the light of the pandemic, do, do you think the Nigerian government is prioritizing the economy over the, the state of health of its citizens? Uh, well, I don't think so. Uh, okay. Because if you look into Lagos, for example, uh, the IGR in Lagos, uh, internally generated uh, revenue was uh, uh, projected to be 73 billion naira per month. And Lagos State uh, projected 80, 896 billion naira in 2020. I don't think they will get about 50% of that uh, their projection because of this uh, pandemic. Yes. Uh, but for me, uh, human life are irreplaceable, and uh, the loss of human lives uh, uh, cannot be replaced. So uh, we should put all uh, strategies in place, all applications in place to ensure that Nigerian life matters, uh, because uh, no life, no, 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 no economy. So we must put priority to human life, then Nigeria will be a better place. Security expert Dixon Osaji, thank, thank you for you. your time on Plus Politics and for your contribution as always. Thank you, Benny Ak. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report Report now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. The governor of Imo State has stressed the need for the judicial arm of government to join forces with other arms of government to deliver dividends of democracy to the people of the state. Governor Hope Uzodema stated this in the government house Nowhere, while presenting 20 SUVs to judges to enable them to discharge their duties effectively. Supported by the good work of the judiciary. It will be out of place if I do anything that will not encourage the judiciary. Yes. So we the issue of outstanding pensions of retired judges and the retired chief justices was able to address. And I saw that judges retire and stay two to three years without receiving their graduate. They didn't consider that a fair deal. That is why when the immediate past judge, chief judge retired, I ensure that his gratuity was paid within record time. That to now, what the judges in Imo State have been suffering as a result of lack of cars, the judges travel to all the nooks and crannies of Imo State, dispensing justice. So they need cars, and they need strong cars. So we are so happy today with His Excellency for what he has done today. This is the first time Imo State judges are getting Prado Jeeps. First time. And uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are grateful to God. We are being equipped to solve the problems of Imo State. If, if I, I, as laid down by uh, for the judiciary, we will protect the weak, we will protect the strong. Our only advice is let us all obey the law. Here is my take. Generally, de-radicalization is understood to make it people with extreme and violent religious or political ideologies adopt more moderate and non-violent views. The approach is predicated on assumption that terrorists and others with extremist views can engage in a way that can reduce their risks of reoffending. The Operation Safe Corridor, which was set up in 2016 by the government, targets Boko Haram combatants who have surrendered. This approach targets three key issues, religious ideology, structural or political grievances, and post-conflict trauma. The project engages imams to work with those in the program on religion and offers training in rudimentary vocational skills. They also offer therapy to overcome the trauma they face as members of Boko Haram. But there are a number of questions that de-radicalization and reintegration programs raise. This include the possibility of accurately screening the combatants well enough to measure what level of threats they pose. This is a problem in a country like Nigeria where the basis of selecting those who have been released is transparent. For example, there are allegations that criminal elements in the military have colluded with Boko Haram to secure the release of unrepentant terrorists. 
Another question that is raised is, how can we ensure that the former terrorists do not end up re-radicalizing others in the community or becoming spies to their former terrorist masters? And also, is it fair to rehabilitate the combatants without also rehabilitating their victims? I also consider the timing very inauspicious. There is currently a resurgence of attacks by the terrorist group. At the same time, we're battling the pandemic. And it seems to me President Mahmoud Buhari's government is facing a declining sense of legitimacy. Lagos like State, considering reopening the economy, is laudable, I must say. I have to say, I choose to see this potential move as a way to give its citizens the freedom needed to pursue their daily bread. However, I believe the timing couldn't be worse as the country presently has almost 6,000 cases as of today. I wouldn't want to believe that our government prioritized the economy higher than human life. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. In the meantime, be safe and be well.